I don't like the word accountability. I don't use the word accountability. I don't like that word, right? But being around other people who are positive-minded as a mastermind, there's something that you either want to be part of the group or you're not. Welcome back, everybody. We are joined today by Steve Cantor. Steve is the founder and CEO of Life Bushido. Steve, welcome. How are you today? I'm doing great. I'm orange today. That's great. You want to tell our listeners what orange means? Yeah. So within Life Bushido, we like to uh, describe what color we're feeling that day. Like orange means really go, 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 bushido -y, take on the world. Green is pretty good, life's flowing, blue is sort of blah, and red is crisis, you know, something bad happened or is happening, I'm just totally stressed out that day. Got it. So you're orange today. How does that uh, manifest itself for you? Um, I'm feeling really good about my physical energy and mental energy and emotional energy and the stuff I have scheduled for my day is generally stuff that I want to do, not stuff that I don't like doing or that I'm stressed doing. Got it. That's uh, That sounds like a pretty good place to be. I don't think I'm an orange today. I'm feeling... well, oranges, I think people are orange between zero and 10% of the time. We're surrounded by NPCs that are never orange. <laughs> True enough. True enough. So tell us a little bit about what Life Bushido is and what, you know, what your whole uh, goal is of the Life Bushido program. So Life Bushido means live life boldly. And as I've gone through life, I have accelerated my desire to live life boldly. I'm at this sweet spot of life where I'm older than you guys. I'm an empty nester. I'm financially okay. Um, my ego is a bit lower than it was when I was 40. I want to give back to society, but I also want to challenge myself. I'm not done. So it's a confluence of events that let me play full out and live life boldly. And what I realize is I love to find other people who are living life boldly or who want to live life boldly, but they've never felt that they could for whatever reason. And so my idea is to combine something which is a positive give back social entrepreneurial thing with an actual business model of a membership subscription business. So I like to hang out with people who want to live life boldly, and I'm in a quest to find that one to 10% of people who fit that. So you keep saying live life boldly. You want to Tell us a little bit about what living life boldly means to you and how you identify yes. others. Yes. So imagine you go up to a hundred randos in the street and you say, Hey, do you want to live life boldly? There's three possible answers, which is yes, or they'll say no, or they'll say, what does it mean to live life boldly? There's a subtle third one, which is after three or four seconds, they say yes, which means they really don't want to live life boldly. So then the issue is, Oh, that's cool, Jason. What would it mean for you to live life boldly? And what I found is most people don't know what they want in life. Like if you ask them, what do you want in life? They'll go, uh, 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 and whatever they say, they'll give some different answer a month later. You see what I mean? Very few people know what they want. And if they want to live life boldly, what would that be defined as? So everybody's definition of living life boldly or bushido -y, is different at any point in time. Like for me, living life boldly right now is I pinged you and said, hey, I wanna be on the podcast and two days later, I'm on your podcast, which is pretty cool, right? That's living life boldly. Yeah, Steve, I know you're big in the book, um, Think and Grow Rich. And the thing that they talk about in there is definite, definiteness of purpose, right? So that is that roughly what you mean by um you know, living life boldly and people knowing what they want? 
I think it, it relates to a lot of different aspects of life. So we've asked over a hundred people, what do you want? What do you want in life? And we've had them do a 10 minute exercise, which is fun if you want to try that, if you're listening, which is go get a piece of paper. And after this podcast, set the timer for 10 minutes, number one to 10, and simply write out sub stream of conscious. I want X, I want Y, I want C, and just see what you end up writing. What most people write are really sort of vague things like, I want to be financially free. What does that mean? Does that mean you live in a cave as a hermit on $1,000 a month? Does it mean that you have passive income of $20,000 a month when you're age 40 and you're retired? Does it mean you have a net worth and you can not make any more money and just spend 4% a year? You see what I mean? Or somebody says they want to travel the world. What does that mean? I'm very lucky at age 25, I backpacked around the world for a year and I've been to 70 countries and my goal is 100 by 2030. So I want to continue traveling the world and by 2030 go from 70 to 100 countries visited. Or the most classic one is I want to lose weight, right? Or I want to meet my soulmate. I want to meet my lifelong partner. I want an LTR. Do you know what an LTR is, Anthony? I'm guessing long-term relationship. Correct. You have STRs. Do you have any LTRs in your life? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So by the way, I, I was mentioning short-term rentals, not short-term relationships. I know. I had to do the quick <laughs> flip and I was like, wait a minute, what just happened? But yeah, I got you. <laughs> but I, I've had like 10 people age like 30 to 50, you know, I want a long-term relationship. And I say, what is that? And they don't know what it is. No one, no one out of 10 people could give me a memorized answer or a statement of what a long-term relationship is. Is that a week? Is that until you die? Right? Does that mean you're married? You're not married? So there's a certain specificity to all of this that, that you need from people. Uh, and then once they know what that is, then you can help them work towards accomplishing that thing through Right. Through all of your Bushido frameworks. The goal is, if you want to live life boldly, what does that mean? And it's an ongoing process, a daily process of Kaizen, the Japanese word for continuous incremental improvement. Kaizen means making everything better every day in your life. Maybe the whole growing up 1% a day type thing. I don't think you can grow your, you know, your strength by 1% a day. That's not going to... but there's some aspect of your life that you can move forward by 1%, right? Time management, relationships, emotional energy, mental energy, physical fitness, etc. So this is the first time, but we got to seven minutes, which is, I forgot the question. <laughs> like Anthony asked that one, didn't you? Uh, oh, the, well, I wasn't sure if we were talking about how definiteness of purpose matched ah. with, is that where you're going with this, Steve? Yes, yes, yes. So, so, so clarity is writing things down. We all have thoughts. We have a negative bias. We're built to have a negative bias for survival, right? Like the default network is negative stuff, negative self-talk, negative thoughts, right? Much more than positive. Okay. So we know what we don't want. You say, what do you not want? People go boom, 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 right? But they say what you want, it's harder to say. The definite purpose relates to a Bushido or what's your chief aim in life. So out of all, the, out of living life boldly, right? Like um, Jason, one of your wants probably was to do a podcast. And That's correct, yeah. Correctly, you've been doing that for six months, correct? Yeah, about that, maybe a couple longer. But you had this want for how long? A couple of years. Okay, so that's normal. There's like millions of people with that same thing. They want to write a book. They want to go to Africa, right? They want to, you know, teach people. They want to become a pro professor. So what fascinates me is finding out what people want, having them get clarity by writing it down. It has to be written down, first hand written and then in computer form. And then every day in a small group, which we call a circle, to help each other 
live life boldly. So let's talk a little bit about the, the daily circle. How does that work and how do you feel and how have you seen that that helps people move towards their Bushidos? So I'm fascinated by anthropology and history and small group interaction. I have a master's in international relations of global theory and history, but I love the idea of small groups. So if you ask anyone and you say, which three small groups in your life were the most positively impactful, people will come up with immediate answers. Their family, for example, right? Their high school buddies, right? The eighth, the eighth grade baseball team, you know, your summer camp bunk mates. You follow what I mean? So I believe that the ideal small group interaction is roughly six to nine people, which I'll call a circle. The smaller unit is exactly what you're staring at at the screen right now, which is three people, which is a triangle. So on a daily basis, the Life Bushido Circle, we check in once a day for a minute or two, and we simply say, did we get our daily Bushido complete? The one thing that takes 10 minutes, let's say journaling or praying or doing push-ups, something that we do in the morning every single day to move our life forward. So it creates a momentum or a flywheel effect. And by hearing it from other people, it encourages you to get it done. You don't want to let yourself down. You don't want to let down the group. It builds self-confidence. So the starting point is, gee, could you live life boldly for 1% of your life? 1% of your life is one hour a week out of 100 or 10 minutes a day per day. Can you actually do the same thing something positive in your life every single day. And as you know, the answer is a lot of people don't do that. They just wake up and whatever happens, happens in their life. But people who have some plan for their life and some structure definitely are usually happier and they get more stuff done moving towards what they want. So a daily Bushido is something that takes 10 minutes or longer that you have not done in the past or you only got down like half the time. Maybe you said you want to read the Quran right every morning and you were doing it maybe two or three days a week and now you're doing it seven days a week. Or you've never journaled but you've heard journaling is good and all of a sudden you start journaling or you've never meditated. And I believe that that builds incredible self-confidence and most people including me, we need way more self-confidence to combat the negative bias in our brain. Steve, is there an example you can think of where you've seen somebody implement your plan and like like one of those really There's, impressive moments? No, one, one that blew me away is uh, literally quit smoking. This guy, which I'll, I'll connect you to if you want to, um, he, he'd love to do an interview and he's probably articulate. The guy's name is Zayed out of Pakistan, I think Karachi. He's 18 years old between college and high school and university. Since age 14 in Pakistan, they smoke a lot more. Since age 14, he'd been smoking about 12 to 14 cigarettes a day. And for some reason, as he got into the first 10 days of life Bushido, he decided his daily Bushido was to quit smoking. And it was Ramadan, which was both an interesting time that month as well as harder for him. And he methodically moved it down and now he's to one cigarette per day, which is kind of crazy, but that's a great example or people who have met it, people who have tried to meditate off and on, but it never stuck for some reason being in the small group. I, I'm not sure why there's different science behind it. I don't like the word accountability. I don't use the word accountability. I don't like that word. Right. But being around other people who are positive minded as a mastermind, there's something that you either want to be part of the group or you're not. Does that make sense? Right? You, let's say you're in a group, any group you're in at any moment in time, do I want to be in that group or do I want to be out or am I going to get kicked out if I don't comply with the norms of that group? Just a quick follow up. Uh, what was the time period on um, that member that cut their smoking down? That was just 30 days. Another one was a guy named Osime in, in Nigeria, I think. This guy's like 40, 45. He wants to write a book. He's got a small business, etc. And his thing was simply to go, you know, to, to 
he works really hard and he doesn't have physicality in his work. So he wanted to jog every morning for 20 minutes, right? So he was on a Bushido coffee call with like six people around the world, world yesterday. And he's saying, my daily Bushido is to jog, right? And I found out that he's like jogged 10 days in a row. He's feeling great, you know, physically great, but I think psychologically great. Does that make sense? And I said, Osume, how long have you thought about jogging for? And he said, oh, probably four or five years. So I actually don't know why, and if it seems like I'm a little surprised, I am, meaning it's a good thing, it's kind of working, but in some ways it's, it's fascinating how somehow some people decide to, okay, I'm gonna try this, and all of a sudden after 10 days, they're doing something which they had thought about doing for years, and then I think saying it out loud to the universe, saying daily Bushido complete, I woke up by 7 a.m., I did meditation for 15 minutes, I did 30 minute of cardio elliptical, and my streak is now five days old, right? I think saying that says something to your own, it's like auto-suggestion or affirmation to yourself, and you're saying it to these people that you gradually respect, and I truly think you're saying it to the universe or God or to energy or whatever you want to say. So you build up this momentum. So you do these small daily Bushido things. Now, how do we roll that into attaining your your bigger Bushido? Because I know there's different levels of the Bushidos. There's the, yes. the daily, yes. there's baby Bushidos, there's big Bushidos. Every, every, every third word is the word Bushido, <laughs> which is, is part of the entertainment. We have dog Shidos. A dog Shido oh. is a life Bushido member who has a dog. And when they walk the dog, they show us their dog Shido on their daily post. We also I have like kid, it. we also have kid Shidos, uh, which are for some reason like we have circles that are named after fruits, like the apples and the bananas. And sometimes somebody's six year old kid comes on and says, Hi apples, did you do your daily bushido? And she says, I did my daily bushido, blah, 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 and it just livens everybody up. So You've got your daily Bushido, then, but then what do you want, you know, physically, emotionally, mentally, and what's going to move you towards your Bushido? So then we break it down to like a one month period and we call it a baby Bushido and we call it a Bushido hour. So the starting baby point is 10 minutes a day. Then the question is, gee, do you want to actually work on your baby Bushido, on your Bushido? You know, you've been spending zero hours a week out of 100 on your podcast, Jason, for the last four years, right? Do you want to start spending one hour per day? And people will either say no or yes. If they say yes, we've tricked them into psychologically committing to themselves to spend one hour per day on something. Then they're put in a triangle of three or four people. And they're simply scheduling a Bushido hour every day, usually in the morning, because morning's when you're most productive. And during that Bushido hour, they're doing focused Bushido work to move forward towards their baby Bushido, which is a clear interim, interim step. So the goal is they may spend 10, 20, 30 hours in one month on their Bushido. But everybody who does this, they say that one Bushido hour is equal to easily three to four hours of normal life or work. Does that make sense? And I know Anthony's a coder, and I'm sure like sometimes, you know, four hours of your work is equal to another coder's 40 hours or what is expected. That's what I'm trying to sell anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that makes sense. That makes sense. It's like you have a big idea. You can't eat an elephant whole. You got to, you know, break it up into smaller problems and so it sounds like you have your your unit with these baby bushidos is about a month and you're just trying to see what people can get done in a month rinse and repeat month after month after month in right. service of a greater goal right i know you guys are, are are coders so think about like agile or scrum or those words that i don't know what they mean but i can say them nobody you know, knows so, what they actually mean <laughs> so let's say the sprint okay life is a marathon right also, I, uh, a side note, life for me, life is a game. Life Bushido is a game. Whoever's watching, do you want to play? Just reach out to me, okay? So 
you know, life, sh life should be fun. Life Bushido is fun. We have songs, we have music, we have people in Ghana dancing to the songs. If we're not having fun at Life Bushido, we're not playing. We don't want to play. So, um, the marathon, think of the sprint as being a month at a time, right? And it's, it's not a sprint as in you're going to get exhausted. It's to get in a flow of the one Bushido hour. I think you've read the fact that people who are incredibly successful in life, like Olympic athletes or musicians or scientists, they don't work eight hours a day. No one works eight hours a day. They work three to four hours a day. Are you, are you guys aware of that or have you ever read that? I have heard that, yeah. The there's, four there's uh, four hours is about the maximum of like true productivity that you can get out of a day before you just can't right. anymore. Correct. But it also correlates to people who are insanely successful. They never tried to do eight. They would do their three or four whenever that fits their chron chronological cycle. And then they go for walks with people or just hang or read books or listen to music. Right. But that speaks to the importance of writing your goals down and staying focused. Because if you think I can just work four hours a day, but it's not focused. And then you're basically cutting the eight hours down in half and you don't know what you're doing. Like you can get yourself into a bad spot. Correct. And most people are in a buffer or a whirlwind of life is just happening. And there is no Bushido hours. There's no clarity of what the Bushido hour should be. And if there was a Bushido hour, they're not going to do it because they're going to avoid and procrastinate that thing. But this sort of leads into where people spend their time and what they need to stop doing. So one of the questions we ask in the first 10 days is, Anthony, I'll ask, I'll ask you both and just say what you like, okay? Anthony, what's the three things that you want to stop doing or delete or reduce in your life? Um, that's tough for me to come up with on the fly because I am very intentional about my days. Got it. How about you, Jason? Anything come to mind? Not immediately. Okay, so I want to I want to stop doing dishes, but that's not what you're asking. Yeah, my, my first thought was laundry. So <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'll give you three of the most common ones, which is people want to stop scrolling. They want to stop scrolling negative social media. They want to stop procrastinating, and they want to stop negative thinking which could be just having negative thoughts or negative self-talk type stuff. And out of a, a hundred people, those are the three biggest things. So we've got specific triangles that people work together just on that. So the goal is, uh, in fact, we have something for college students called College Bushido, where the idea is to, in a small group, to stop scrolling one hour a day and instead replace it with something positive for one hour a day. The whole stopping part doesn't entertain me unless it's replaced by something positive that's moving towards their Bushido. So what, so I, I'm kind of very intense about this. You guys have interacted with me and I'm not sure why I am, but I think it differentiates and I, I've started to use this more often. Basically we have NPCs and we have people like us. What are people like us called? What What's the acronym? Is there one? Well, I was just, the, the first thing I started thinking of was the subreddit, I'm the main character, which is not a good thing, but it's different from being an NPC. <laughs> we're, we're the MC. True. We're the MC, not the NPC. I wonder if we asked 100 people like us, what percent of the population are NPC? and what percent are MCs. You see what I mean? I think in the world, I think maybe 10% are, 90% are, are NPCs, and 10% are main characters. It's not a judgment, this is a weird thought. You know how we've got survival, stability, success? I guess what I'm saying is 90% of people who are, who, reached, who are at stability, they're fine there, they're happy. There's no cognitive, creative dissatisfaction where they def they want to get to whatever they think success is. I don't know. I've been thinking about that a bit. 
So I guess what I'm saying, Life Bushido is for 10% of the people or less, not 90%. It's for the people who, wherever they are in life, even if life is pretty good, for whatever reason, their brain works that they want to do more. They want to grow more. They want to help more people. They want to make more money. They want to create more art, whatever. It's just this, this built-in thing of more or different. Yeah, I'm trying to think about that one a little bit. Like, I know, generally speaking, people will are lazy, right? They'll pick the path of least resistance. So maybe that speaks to that 90%, where if there's not a pain that is to be avoided or something to be pursued, then, yeah, we'll just, just stay where we are. So the word in, in, interesting, uh, lazy is pejorative. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll change it slightly and call it comfortable, meaning that a body at rest remains at rest, including a body on the couch in a potato shape, right? A couch potato. There's nothing wrong with that. That person's comfortable. They don't want to get out of their comfort zone, right? Especially if they now have an Alexa robot that they say, Alexa robot, please get me my favorite chips and dip and a different beer this time, right? What could be better than that? But there's people who will go crazy if they sit on that couch for longer than 30 minutes. And whoever's running this universe or design this universe simulation, whatever, we're not all built the same. So a certain percentage of us are NPCs on the couch and a certain percentage of us want to do Thomas Edison things and fail 10,000 times. Obviously, it wouldn't work if we were all like Thomas Edison and like wacko crazy failing 10,000 times. I don't think the world would function. Well, you're probably right. Lots of things would be broken all of the time. I want to talk a little bit about kind of what you are trying to, to build with Life Bushido. I know you are trying to turn it into a, uh, a membership business. Um, so I guess the question for you really is what is your Bushido? So my Bushido, and just like I said, each time someone asks me, it's a different answer. So let's see today's answer. Um, my Bushido is to create Life Bushido as a business and sort of a kernel of an operating system, like a Unix kernel or Linux kernel, where people around the world help each other to live life boldly and to prove that anything is possible. That's my current wording. And that's a combination of price points that are low enough for anyone, for the majority of people in the world to use it. So the USA members, it's free for the first month, then USA members pay $99 a month. When they do that, they're paying it forward and that sponsors one person globally, maybe in Ecuador or Nigeria or Pakistan, that's paying $1 a month. So my previous business was a virtual assistant business. There's fantastic talent around the world. The $99 member is also spending one hour per month to help someone else in the network. And the globals are spending one hour per week to help someone else in the network. And think of the helping somebody else as like a time bank where we're all equal. I don't care whether someone, someone's time's worth $200 an hour or $5 an hour. We are all equal. We're huge on diversity. It doesn't matter how tall you are, your religion, your gender. All that matters is do you want to live life boldly? Do you want to help other people? And do you believe anything is possible? So... I've done a lot of crowdsourced and open source systems, and I'm taking my life experience and finding like-minded people to kind of make this happen. So out of 10 people who join, there may be one that really not only benefits a lot, but thinks this is really cool, and they'll do something that moves the system forward. They'll innovate with something else that then spreads through the, through the network with the network effect. So it's deliberately built for being interconnected. For example, the people in a circle may be different than the people in the triangle. 
So you're in a triangle with two other people, but those people are in different circles, so all of a sudden you're connected in a family of like 27 people. And people go on Bushido walks with each other. I think, Anthony, you've done one or two of those with some people, where two people, different places around the world, for an hour go on a walk with each other virtually, literally outside walking, half hour spent on one person, half hour on the other of, who are you, what are you looking for in life, how can I help you? That's very cool. Yeah, I've I've done maybe two or three of them. And it's awesome to hear somebody else's perspective on my problem, because they'll say a sentence or two that changes the way I think about it. And like, you know, and there's always that little nugget, you might spend a half an hour just kind of getting to know each other. But then it's that one sentence that you don't know where it's going to come from, or who's going to say it that changes the way you think. And that has been very helpful for me. And it's very much the diversity, like, we're not quite at the size, but at some point I'm going to, after the first 10 days, ask people, would you rather be in a circle, Jason, of people similar to you or people different? And I know the best answer is different. I'm going to let people choose, but I know statistically that the diversity is where everything comes from. Yeah, that makes sense. The other thing is... Um, is how to design it so it's incredibly time efficient and money efficient. The time efficient means I passionately believe and I think I've proven that 10 minutes a day is way better than one hour a week. The best part is there's no required Zoom calls. You don't have to show up once a week, Wednesdays, eight to nine in the morning for a Zoom call, whether you're in the mood or not. It's just 10 minutes a day and any 10 minutes you want when you're in the mood to listen to other people's video posts, etc. How can people find you? They can find me by looking the comments of this podcast, probably, but you can either go to lifebushido.com or email us at bushido at lifebushido.com or my phone number you can text or WhatsApp is 202-297-2393. My name's Steve Cantor. And also, we've got on all the social media different channels. The best one to look at is YouTube Life Bushido, L I F E B U S H I D O. Perfect. Yeah, we'll make sure all that stuff gets put into the show notes so people can see it and learn how to get in touch with you. Okay, great. Well, Steve, thank you so much for taking the time today. I know you. Uh... You wanted to spend half an hour. We spent about half an hour. It was a good conversation. We really appreciate you being here and teaching everybody about how to live life boldly. Well, thank, thank you. you. I, I really, uh, I enjoy, um, I enjoyed the conversation and the chance to sort of articulate uh, my vision. And I really appreciate you guys taking the time and helping other people by spending your time to interview people and put Put people's ideas up there in case it helps someone so kudos to you for that and kudos for you that you've uh kept going it's been a couple months you know you're ahead of 95 percent of podcasts probably yeah we're, we're getting pretty close i think t what did i say to you before anthony 21 episodes and you're in the top 10 percent of something like that yeah yeah the, the bar's pretty low <laughs> yeah <laughs> we're getting there all right well thank you steve again and Thank then, you. Thanks, Jason. Yeah. Thanks, Anthony. Everybody, until next time, be well.